Chapter 2, Linear Functions. Chapter 1 was a window that gave us a peek into the entire course. Our goal was to understand the basic structure of functions and function notation. The toolkit functions, domain, and range, how to recognize and understand composition and transformations of functions, and how to understand and utilize inverse functions. With these basic components in hand, we will further research the specific details and intricacies of each type of function in our toolkit and use them to model the world around us. Mathematical modeling. As we approach day-to-day -day life, we often need to quantify the things around us, giving structure and numeric value to various situations. This ability to add structure enables us to make choices based on patterns we see that are weighted and systematic. With this structure in place, we can model and even predict behavior to make decisions. Adding a numerical structure to a real-world situation is called mathematical modeling. When modeling real-world scenarios, there are some common growth patterns that are regularly observed. We will devote this chapter and the rest of the book to the study of the functions used to model these growth patterns. Section 2.1, Linear Functions. As you hop into a taxi cab in Las Vegas, the meter will immediately read $3.50. This is the drop charge made when the taximeter is activated. After the initial fee, the taximeter will add $2.76 for each mile the taxi drives. In this scenario, the total taxi fare depends upon the number of miles ridden in the taxi. And we can ask whether it is possible to model this type of scenario with the function. Using descriptive variables, we choose M for miles and C for cost in dollars as a function of miles, C of M. We know for certain that C of zero equals $3.50. Since the drop charge is $3.50 is assessed regardless of how many miles are driven. Since $2.67 is added for each mile driven, then C of one equals $3.50 plus $2.67 equals $6.17. If we then drove a second mile, another $2.67 would be added to the cost. C of two equals $3.50 plus $2.67 plus $2.67 equals $3.50 plus $2.67 times two equals $8.84. If we drove a third mile, another $2.67 would be added to the cost. From this, we might observe the pattern and conclude that if M miles are driven, C of M equals $3.50 plus $2.67 times M because we start with a $3.50 drop fee and then for each mile increase, we add $2.67. It is good to verify that the units make sense in this equation. The $3.50 drop charge is measured in dollars. The $2.67 charge is measured in dollars per mile. When dollars per mile are multiplied by a number of miles, the result is a number of dollars matching the units on the $3.50 and matching the desired units for the C function. 
Notice the equation C of M equals $3.50 plus $2.67 times M consisted of two quantities. The first is the fixed $3.50 charge, which does not change based on the value of the input. The second is the $2.67 dollars per mile value, which is a rate of change. In the equation, this rate of change is multiplied by the input value. Looking at this same problem in table format, we can also see the cost changes by $2.67 for every one mile increase. It is important here to note that in this equation, the rate of change is constant. Over any interval, the rate of change is the same. Graphing the equation, we see the shape is a line, which is how these functions get their name, linear functions. When the number of miles is zero, the cost is $3.50, giving the point zero, 3.50 on the graph. This is the vertical or C of M intercept. The graph is increasing in a straight line from left to right because for each mile the cost goes up by $2.67. This rate remains consistent. In this example, you have seen the taxicab costs modeled in words, an equation, a table, and in graphical form. Whenever possible, ensure that you can link these four representations together to continually build your skills. It is important to note that you will not always be able to find all four representations for a problem, and so being able to work with all forms is very important. Linear function. A linear function is a function whose graph produces a line. Linear functions can always be written in the form f of x equals b plus mx, or f of x equals mx plus b. They're equivalent where b is the initial or starting value of the function. When input x equals zero, and m is the constant rate of change of the function. Many people like to write linear functions in the form f of x equals b plus mx because it corresponds to the way we tend to speak. The output starts at b and increases at a rate of m. For this reason alone, we will use the f of x equals b plus mx form for many of the examples but remember, they are equivalent and can be written correctly both ways. Slope and increasing and decreasing. M is the constant rate of change of the function, also called slope. The slope determines if the function is an increasing function or a decreasing function. F of x equals b plus mx is an increasing function if m is greater than zero. F of x equals b plus mx is a decreasing function if m is less than zero. If m equals zero, the rate of change zero and the function f of x equals b plus zero x equals b is just a horizontal line passing through the point 0b, neither increasing nor decreasing.